What's up, folks? The Hummingbird's Daughter by Luis Alberto Urea. Urea. It's hard to get those double R's when there's no consonant. The Hummingbird's Daughter. I gotta say that this is some of the best work I've ever read. Um, it's just, it's just beautiful. And it's, there's a little bit of adventure, it's adventure, it's fun. And uh, so when I think of what I really, really like in a book is when I read something that's so beautiful that like makes me stop. Like I put down the book and I'm like, oh. like I want to keep going, but I have to reflect on what the author just said. And that happened a lot in this book. It happens a lot in like Gabriel that I see with my kids. It happens a lot in. Isabel Allende. Um, I want to see if I can just randomly turn to something and share something. Mm. Let's see. Segundo led Buena Ventura 50 pesos. Segundo. Segundo had also given him, given the boy a swayback horse that was destined for the rending plant or a job of herding cows and mules or horses to far Sonora. Your pistol is a piece of shit, Segundo, Segundo told him. I will buy a new one. You would have to work for a whole year to pay me back my 50 pesos and also buy a new gun. Segundo told him, I will work. And what will you do until you earn your money to buy a good gun? If my pistol does not shoot, I will beat him over the head with it. The whole book is that. It's funny and 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 Mexican. <laughs> it's so it's it's old Mexico, so there's vaqueros and pistoleros and Indians and um it's fun, and what I love about this author, I'm afraid to say his name, do not throw up in the van, stupid. This fool's about to throw up. Um, out of all the magical realism, now if this is magical realism, but out of all the magical realism stories I've read, um, only one takes place in Mexico. La uh, Esquivel, Como Agua para Chocolate, like Water for Chocolate, takes place in Mexico. All the rest are in different places in Latin America. Except this one. This one takes place completely in Mexico. And um, it's weird to read about places that I know of. Sonora, Hermosillo, Tucson. Um, and this novel, it's not that weird, but it, I mean, maybe it was nice. Maybe it was nice to read about places that I know of familiar there was like a familiar sense of everything he he stressed how much they ate and what they ate and how they ate uh, using tortillas instead of utensils uh, that is that's how I grew up eating food and then we get kind of yelled at because I ate so many tortillas um, 
also he uses words that I haven't thought of or heard of in a long time um, words that my grandmother used to say or that I haven't heard since I was a child caca for one like I mean I say it to him <laughs> but it's it's weird to hear it from somebody else uh, fundio <laughs> I haven't heard that word, and I don't know how long if, since my grandmother, uh, in here, um, somebody comes for a healing, and he says, should I show you my fundillo? And, she, and the healer says, no, that's okay, your description is insufficient. Uh, and what was the other word? I don't know, but there was definitely a lot of, um, Spanish curse words used, or Spanish slang, and Mexican slang, I think. It's more, to, it would be more appropriate to call it Mexican slang, I guess. Uh, and they use the word well he said he says no mames once in the book and that and he uses the word buey b-u-e-y instead of way g-u-e-y so I'm confused about that maybe somebody will explain that to me other than that this is a beautiful, well-written, lovely, I don't know, how, whatever words I could use. All of them. All of the good words. This book is it. It's inspiring to me. I need to read, I, I, I want to read more books like this. I love, I love it. Right now, I'm writing... I stopped my, writing one of my <clears throat> my my magical realism book. I stopped writing it. The stories, the content wasn't coming to me. Um, but I need to keep filling my head with stuff like this, and I'm sure that it will. But I think that's it. I was gonna take notes, but Hummingbird's Daughter. I mean, it's a big book. Oh, another fun fact. This is a novel. In case you're wondering, the lead character's name is Urea. And the author's name is Urea. And it's two R's. Uh, it took me 20 years to write this book. Like, I, I wanted to think, I wanted to compare myself. Like, I could never write this, but... The reason I could never write this is I could never take 20 years to write a book, a novel. Uh, this is based on real events, a relative of the author. So, in the beginning of each section, there's a little... Uh, a clip of a writing and it talks about the main character and like oh hmm. I have been reading I heard something else where characters in a book are quoted in the beginning of a section or beginning of a chapter to um, I don't know and they say oh it's kind of interesting Come to find out, these are real excerpts from literature, books, or uh, or newspaper clippings. The hummingbird's daughter existed and was written about, and so he puts real life uh, uh, clips and ex excerpts in those. And so when you read them, you're like, this doesn't make sense. But in the end, he tells you. 
if you read the author's note or whatever. He says uh, that he attributes those excerpts for, uh, they're from, they're real. They're for realsies, all right? Fuck. I'll take this back to the bookstore. Give me a $2 credit. All right, I highly recommend The Hummingbird's Daughter. If you're not Mexican, you probably still like it. But if you're Mexican, Mexican-American, Chicano, wow, wow, wow. It's, it's, it's written, it's written for us. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, other people can enjoy it, but it's written for us. Uh, so I highly, highly, highly recommend And I just want to eat a big plate of chorizo con huevo and beans and with nothing but tortillas. No utensils. <laughs>